You, can't you just see this at this golf course? I gotta throw. Hey, I gotta throw! Ha! Ah! Oh, dude. I'm kidding. A, a, a free disc golf course at a park um, you know best thing we can do is just try to come from the perspective of like you know we don't own this course yes this is a disc golf course but that's just one of many facets that this park carries out you know it's also a field for children to run and play in it's also a, a baseball diamond a basketball court there's several things that are going to be utilized on a free course now pay to play totally get it someone's in your way Give them a shout. Be like, hey, shooting up, just letting you know, you know, and then at that point, they understand they're on a disc golf course. They're gonna get hit if they don't move. But people in the public don't know that. And so one thing we have control over is the way we allow people to understand disc golf. If their first exposure to disc golf is somebody yelling at them because they're walking through our path or, or walking through the, the line towards the basket, is someone saying, hey, get them out of the way? I mean, it's probably not gonna be someone who's going to be uh, open to playing disc golf later on. Definitely not gonna be somebody who's gonna advocate it. In fact, the next time they see somebody who plays disc golf, they're likely to be like, yeah, all those guys are jerks, man. I was walking to the park with the kids the other day. People were screaming at me, get out the way. Like, it's a park, it's a free park, bro. You know what I mean? So, best thing we can do is just practice the, the golden rule. Treat others the way you would like to be treated. And if you like see somebody walking by and you kind of give them a heads up, hey, by the way, we're playing here, and they they scoot on scoot on by, make sure to say thank you, appreciate it, uh, you know, have a great day, whatever you can, and leave that person having a good experience. So that way, they might even come up to you and be like, hey, what is this? What are you guys doing? What are you guys playing? We are meant to occupy the same space. And those people who are able to communicate well enough with others to motivate them to do the right thing or what we're looking for them to do are the people who have tact, tolerance, patience, those type of ideals, if we can exude those in our lives, gives a person an opportunity to be grown. It also gives another person in the park an opportunity to say, hey, oh, okay, you know, next time I won't walk through this way because they play here. So, I mean, it works out best for, for everybody to, to do that approach. No way, bro. I just told them, I'm like, hey, we're throwing. I don't care, you guys can wait if you want. I'm gonna throw. If they get hit, I told them, right? I told them, I did my part, I did my part. The reality is there's gonna be a lot of people that are still, even if they watch this video, are gonna yell at people because they're in the way and have that sense of entitlement with them. And you know, there's times where I even play on a weekly league where there's people that are in my group that are also impatient. And you know, so one thing I try to do is diffuse the situation. You might not be the person who's yelling, but what you might have is some tact and tolerance. Maybe you're blessed with a little bit more than the person you're playing with. So what you can do is diffuse the situation by like, kind of like tapping them on the arm. Ah, don't worry about it, bro, it's no big deal. You know, you're still gonna lose anyway. Ha ha, ha I got you, ha ha. I mean, you got a number of things you can do and you can kind of diffuse the situation. The worst thing to do is, is to add fuel to the fire by saying, yeah, you know, I can't believe these guys. We tell them all the time, bro, you're right. You told them, just go ahead and shoot. You're totally right. No, you don't wanna do that. You wanna be an advocate of good. We wanna be ambassadors of good. Disc golf is good. The people who play disc golf are good. And if you're not good yet, you're getting better. And that's what this sport does. It relates to our lives. It allows us to implement these rules and codes of conduct in our own daily living. So, you know, uh, if you're already implementing this practice, thank you. Thank you for making disc golf funner and more acceptable to the people who witness it. And if you haven't yet, maybe you can implement one or two of these little things. And maybe the next time you see somebody walking by on the course that's in your way, you might think for a little bit of a moment for a quick second and do some reflection and say, ah, it's not a big deal. It's going to make me finish my game, what, two minutes earlier, a minute and a half earlier? Doesn't matter. You're still getting home at 9 o'clock at night and your lady's still going to be pissed. <laughs> Just saying. I want to take this opportunity to thank all the people who've subscribed to my channel recently. We've got over 200 subscribers now, over 13,000 views since January when I first opened this channel. Um, we've got a couple of sponsors that are backing us as well. I recently did a podcast with Zen Disc Golf Podcast. 
If you haven't heard of them yet, please go to zendiscgolf.com. Uh, Take a look. Take a look at their website, their blog. Listen to the podcast. You'll do yourself a favor. They they really talk about things that are intangible but are absolutely detrimental to your game. And uh, you know. It's a really, I had a great experience with them. So please um, take a look at the podcast. I'll be posting it online and, and putting the link everywhere. And uh, another thing I'd like to shout out to is the Big Daddy Disc Golf Facebook group. We've got about 180 people, members of the group so far. And really, this is a group for anybody who's overweight and looking to either A, get healthy and get active by adding some fun way to get some exercise in their life, or B, improve their disc golf game. Whoa, yeah.